Ah, oh, great to be back in L.A., folks. Yeah. I was uh, in Chicago last... I came in yesterday. I took this Southwest Airlines... Have you ever flown this piece of junk, generic? <laughs> it's like a Trailways bus with wings. Have you flown this? You know you're in trouble when the flight attendant says, just sit wherever you like. <laughs> it's open seating. You can fly the plane if you want. We all take time. We stopped four times on the way here. Four times. We were picking people up at their houses. It was the worst. I flushed the toilet. One of the engines died. I couldn't believe what was that. It's nice to be back, though. What a day I had. I went to this magic mountain, this amusement park. Have you done this thing yet? I went on this ride called the Ninja. Have you heard about this? The Ninja? What a... It's just a bumper car ride. But right in the middle of it, this Chinese guy hops on and beats the living hell out of me. I was overwhelmed. I said, hey, stick the fork in me, I'm done. Take me home pronto. I've had more fun than I can share in one day. Adios, amigos. Color me history. A lot of amusement parks out here. Disneyland's real popular, have you done that yet? Yeah? Yeah. They're always expanding there, too, you know? In fact, they just built this new extension this year called Reality Land. Have you heard about this? Yeah, the first ride you go on is a freeway ride. It's where your whole family piles into a 78 Dodge station wagon. No air conditioning. As you sit stranded in traffic, fumes from a semi-truck are pumped into your car. I could have sworn I was on the 405 freeway. No kidding. I said, hey, pinch me. This is too real. I was there. I was in the moment. <laughs> Driving's the worst out here. You know what I can't take are the motorcycles. Because they're allowed to cut in between the lanes when you're driving. If you don't, doesn't that drive you nuts? Yeah. Uh, especially when you're going nowhere, they're just cutting in between. Don't you feel like just opening up your door real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Oh, sorry, dude. I was just going to check the air in my tires, man. <laughs> Bummer, dude. Here's your helmet, man. I think your glasses are over there somewhere. <laughs> it's the worst driving out here. Courtesy's gone out the window, too. Best way to drive on the freeway in L.A., if you want to get in the left lane, what you do is you put your right blinker on. <laughs> this way, everybody shoots the blocky in the right lane, and you're slipping on the left one. <laughs> you're all cooking. Yeah. Put those stakes on, honey. I'm home early tonight. I might even catch the news. Who knows? So how would you like to be the next guy that has to fight Mike Tyson? <laughs> you think he doesn't have a few frustrations? He wants to pound out on somebody? I wouldn't suggest wearing a Robin Givens mask. In the ring. It just might work against you. you know? I don't feel sorry for Mike Tyson. You know who I feel sorry for? Is the boxer in the Olympics who missed his fight. Oh, man, he missed the bus to his fight. <laughs> you know how disappointing this is to be? Here's a guy that trains four years. Think about this. Every day for this fight. At running, boxing, inspired, training, running, boxing, inspired. The day of truth finally comes, and it's like, Holy smokes! I missed my bus! Oh, nuts! Ain't this a bitch? Four years down the pipe, I'll be a monkey's uncle. I mean, you know, you got guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, he's articulate, he's trying to rid the boxer's image of being dumb, and this guy goes and sets it back another hundred years. I missed my book. I read the schedule wrong. I read the schedule wrong, sorry. I messed up. You know, it's funny, but it's sad, because, you know, this guy could go on to be the next Muhammad Ali. In his whole life, he's going to be known as, you're the dude that missed the bus, huh? I thought that was you. Come on, honey, let's take a picture. Yeah, that's it. Come on. I knew it was you. They'll never let him live it down. His whole life, people will be walking up. Hey, by the way, you got the time? No, <laughs> I'm only kidding, pal. Get out of here. It's a joke. Go on. I know who you are. I'm only kidding. Get out. I love you. <laughs> Hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to know when the next bus is coming by. 
totally kidding. I know you are. Go on. Get out of here. What a scandalous Olympics, though, man. All the drugs they were using. You know, it's a good thing they have drug restriction at the Olympics. You know. I mean, imagine if they didn't. The records they'd be breaking that day. <laughs> You'd have guys running the mile in a minute. All right, hit the buzzer. Go ahead, just hit the buzzer. I'm ready to go. Hit the buzzer. I'll run it twice. I don't give a damn. Just hit the buzzer. Let's... <laughs> the hardest thing would be just trying to line up everybody for the race. <laughs> Will you guys quit jacking around over there? Get on the start line. I don't care. I'll give him a head start. Just hit the buzzer. Let's go. I'll run it twice. I don't care. Then I'll do the marathon. Then I'll do the decathlon. Just hit the buzzer. Hit the buzzer. Oh, you'd have guys pole vaulting out of the stadium. <laughs> Holy good God. What drug was he on? He just pole vaulted to Guam. He's in Guam, ladies and gentlemen. I watch a lot of sports. I grew up listening to an announcer in Chicago by the name of Harry Carey. Did you ever hear of this guy? Oh, what an announcer. He's one of these guys like Vince Scully and uh, whoever. They talk about everything but the game. You know, these announcers, they got all these old stories. He's been around since mud, right? And he gets into these old stories. The play-by-play -play becomes secondary. I'm watching him one day. He's going, you know, Steve. I was on Sunset Boulevard last night getting totally inebriated. I closed the one bar, went across the street at a taco at that greasy spoon. Well, there's a triple play. Anyway, I had too many jalapeno peppers. I get indigestion, you know. That's a fastball off Dawson's head, both benches empty. So I'm looking for the Pepto Bismo. He's on a stretcher, I think he's dead. Finally. The game is incidental. He's more concerned what celebrities are there that day. Hey, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Charlie Masson's here today with a group of 50. From Joliet State Prison. This parole they hear at Wrigley. There's a grand slam. You know, I was in jail one time. This big Samoan wanted to tie me up and spank me. That's a no-hitter. You know, I wanted him to do it. Because I'm a bad man and a cup fan. <laughs> so long, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy your evening.